At our last meeting, uh, the subcommittee dealt with uh, six items on the order of replenishment, and uh, our first item of business today will be Ms. Hepner's bill, C-391. Uh, you're probably all aware that the Speaker has ordered that Bill C-301, which was Gary Breitkreis's bill, is to be dropped from the order paper and removed from the order of precedence. So according to the criteria by which we're able to deem items non-votable, some members argued that based on perceived similarities between Bill 301 and 391, uh, since that impediment has now been removed uh, and no longer an issue, I'm going to rule that Bill C-391 is votable and we'll move on to the subsequent items. Okay. So we'll move on to M-386. Can I just ask a question? Madam Charlton? Um, and I suppose it's a question for the analyst, but uh, Bill S-5 is still before Parliament. It's in the Senate. It's identical to C-391. Um, and it's my understanding that one of the criteria is about bills that, uh, that are identical before Parliament. S-5 is before Parliament, and I wonder if the uh, analyst might be able to comment on that. Um, well, that may be a question for the analyst and the, the clerk as well. Um, it is a principle of parliamentary procedure that this House and the House of Commons should not know what is taking place uh, in the other place. So even though it's public uh, knowledge that uh, Bill S-5 is before the Senate, um, we, we shouldn't take into consideration Bill S-5 when we're examining the uh, uh, this bill, uh, the, um, the private members bill and the criteria. Is that the case even when it's a current government bill? Because that is one of the criteria that's before us and S5 is a government bill. That, my understanding is that it will also apply to uh, S5, a government bill. <clears throat> okay, as we hear differently, I think that's pretty clear, our analyst has indicated. Okay, we'll move Chair. on to Chair, I would like a I uh, I would like a ruling from the speaker, if possible, on this very issue, um, whether or not, or a ruling from you, given that you are the chair, given that the government has an item of business which is identical to that which Ms. Hepner has put forward in Bill C three nine one, whether or not, in fact. Um, that can be taken into consideration. Okay. With all due respect, I, I think we have the four criteria outlined clearly before us upon which bills are votable or non-votable. I think it's up to this committee to decide their votability, not the speaker. Uh, but I, I'm, I'll, Mr. Reed, you wanted to comment? Well, yeah, I just uh, have the list of criteria as decided by the uh, uh, Committee of Procedure and House Affairs. Uh, under the standing orders, the criteria made by the Procedure and House Affairs Committee are in fact part of the standing orders, although not contained therein, and uh, the four criteria include um, items three and four, I'll read them both. Item three is the item on the basis of which uh, opposition members opposed allowing Bill C-391 to go forward while Bill C-301 was on the order paper. The argument there, the criteria is, I quote, Bills and motions must not concern questions that are substantially the same as ones already voted on by the House of Commons in the current session of Parliament or as ones preceding them in the order of precedence. Uh, that, that criteria is no longer met. Item four, which I assume, criteria number four, is I assume what uh, uh, is being referred to here, and I'm, I'm quoting again, is bills and motions must not concern questions that are currently on the order paper or notice paper as items of government business. Now. Order paper and notice paper are instruments of the House of Commons. The Bill S-5 uh, is in the Senate and therefore is it neither on the order paper nor the notice paper. Therefore, there is no need to fear that uh, uh, Bill C-391 would in any way be a, um, a out of order on the basis of where Bill S-5 is. It would be different if Bill S-5 had been passed by the Senate and was now before the House on the notice paper, order paper, but it isn't. Okay. And then checking with the clerk as well, it's clear that it's referring to items that are uh, in the House of Commons, and that one is not. So, Ms. Charlton? Um, Chair, appreciate that guidance, and uh, just heard you say that uh, it's not a matter for the Speaker, but that we vote on the bill, so I wonder if we could have a vote on uh, Bill C-391 then. Sure. Um, uh, 
Mr. Reed? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm just curious if the intention here, I should advise members, I, I'm sure everybody is going to vote uh, based on the criteria. If the intention is to uh, vote with no actual criteria against the bill uh, in order to stop it from going forward, I would just remind the opposition members of, of two things. One is that we are meeting in a public session, so their vote is now on the record. And uh, number two, that uh, it simply would be uh, impermissible for us to allow this to go forward uh, as, as a negative uh, item and I would have to be in a position of having to prevent this from being reported back to the uh, to the main committee. I just make that observation Mr. Chairman. Okay, any further comments? Okay, I remind the committee. Yes, uh, S5. S5 doesn't doesn't in interfere whether it's votable or not if I understood well. I'd like to be sure it, there is no interference to, uh, by, uh, because of the fact that S5 is in the, in the Senate and in, in, in it's quite identical. It doesn't interfere whether we uh, decide whether it's votable or not. The fact okay. that there is no interference and that the bill is not before the House in any form, therefore uh, the criteria that we've looked at, the four criteria, uh, certainly do not impede this bill in any way. I uh, just wonder if you could remind me, in the House, when uh, Mr. Breitkreutz's bill was before the House this morning, um, I know that he wasn't in the House to uh, move the motion on the bill, and therefore it wasn't debated, but was it, and I know it was dropped in the order of precedence, was it actually withdrawn? Um, my understanding is that there were multiple attempts to have the bill withdrawn, and because it was not debated this morning, it's automatically ruled by the Speaker that it's no longer, but I'll, I'll look to my clerk for it. The bill was dropped from the order paper, so it's no longer in front of the House. Now, so. Okay. So when does that take effect? Tomorrow when the order paper comes uh, in or immediately? This morning when the Speaker gave his, its ruling. Thank you. Okay. So we're clear. There is no bill currently before the House that's the same as Bill uh, C-391. Or sorry, three, yeah, 391. And I'm going to ask for a motion then to uh, agree to allow this one to stand. All in favor? Opposed? Can I have that again? All in favor of allowing 391 to stand? Uh, let's go to a, a recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Then I'll have some comments to follow that. After the vote? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a recorded vote. Uh, the clerk will run through the... Um... Pardon? On, on what do we vote? Bill 391 as to whether or not it's votable as a private member's bill. So. 